Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel from AEPC 2009 again in Waldorf, Maryland. I'm with the infamous Spody Odie. Spody, yeah, really, good to ha really good to see you here. It's always always fun to be with you at the shows. Um, really interesting stuff that you brought with, brought with you this year. This I've seen before. Yeah. Uh, let's just uh, briefly go over what, what this is and, and then we'll move on to some of this more exotic stuff. Okay, um, like I said, you saw this last show. Uh, the only thing we did the field wires out on this so we everything off. Uh, basically this is a, a five and a half horse Briggs and Stratton motor uh, connected to two uh, 65 amp alternators that charge a four battery. We have two bays, two batteries hooked in parallel uh, with a marine switch so that we can control the power to an inverter to give a 60, 60 cycle supply to uh, a home uh, for like survival technology is basically what it's for. Okay, so this is home home power energy backup, and and this uh, electric electrical inverter is 3,000 watts continuous, 6,000 watt peak power. That's that's a serious uh, inverter. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, well, we've used these on in bays of the buses all the time with luggage packed up against them and everything. And you can run them up to 5,000 watts without damage, and they're available from Truck Stops America. If you ever damage it, you just take it in, trade it back, and put it back on. Four and a quarter off the shelf, very painless, easy to use. Four hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yeah, out the door with the tax. <laughs> wow. Yeah. If you need more power, you just get two. <laughs> and uh, the alternators, any automotive parts star, it's just a GM D10. It's thirty-five bucks each one. Uh, tractor supply for the motor, one hundred twenty-five bucks. The diamond plate box and the wagon that it's sitting on cost more than everything else, except for the cables. Cables are about four dollars a foot. Hundred twenty-five dollars at Tractor Supply Company for, for for the motor. Yeah, I got to visit my local Tractor Supply there's Company. There's one right down the road. Yeah, I know. There's one down the road. I've got a couple locally where I have in, where yeah. I'm in Connecticut too. Yeah. All right. So now you've got a computer case here, and inside the computer case, I see a bunch of solid state relays. Yeah. Uh, tell us what that. What that computer case. It, it, electronic, empty chassis. Get common ground. Box to carry around. Uh, solid state relays uh, invented by John Powell. Uh, these switch out at 15,000 cycles uh, and they're optocoupled. So there's, you can run this entire controller from a 9 volt battery for up to three hours. Uh, everything on here is controlling the supply voltage from here to go to the electrolyzer cell. Uh, there's 10 solid state relays hooked in here now with the uh, c continuous load rating of 40 amps apiece. Okay, so one solid state relay for each of the cells as part of this assembly over here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, at a full a 40 amp continuous, if you have the delivery capability, you would have 400 amps be able to go to this particular cell. Now you're using these solid state relays not just as on-off switches, but you're actually using them as as a pulse control um, control module because you're sending square waves to this to this cell, right? Square waves, yeah. Because with the SSRs, you can put a dirty wave into the primary side if you have a sawtooth or you know, a, a really nasty wave, the SSR will give you whatever your supply is. If it's a DC direct from a battery, it's going to be flat on top and drop off the face of the earth and pick straight up. It's the cleanest square wave you'll ever see. It's dead sexy. You see it on a scope, it just goes, ooh, very yeah, nice. Dead sexy. Okay. Dead sexy, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and we're just using it so that we can give each cell the full potential, because each cell here on the electrolyzer is... Yeah, let's move over to this okay. and talk about it. Uh, each cell here is electrically isolated. Uh, in but they have a common electrolyte manifold through the bottom uh, and a common gas manifold through the top. Uh, the cells are down inside here. There's uh, 17 plates of 316L, uh, 3 anode, uh, 2 cathode, and 3 neutrals between each plate. Uh, there's 1.3 square foot of active reflective surface area here, and at your half amp per square uh, inch reflective, you have about 80 amp capacity per cell. The, everything here, 10 of them together, gives you, if you have the supply, you would have 800 amps of potential of producing gas. Uh, using this control, segmenting the time that each one of these is on through the controller, you can still give each one, because these are rated at 40 amps, we can give each cell 40 amps instantaneously uh, and then turning it off to let the next one get the 40 amps. So giving a 40, 400 amp potential at 40 amps at a time in nanoseconds of time on and off. Okay, so in in realistic terms, if if this uh, if this assembly is running at five mmw efficiency and you're hitting it with 800 amps, you could potentially produce 60, 70 liters a minute of of gas out of, out of this thing. Is uh, I'm that not sure where the numbers went on the mmw in that, but I know that whatever 
you put in is what you're going to get out. <laughs> uh, as far as the thermal efficiency, when you start adding more cells than that, you're going to get uh, reflective uh, uh, modulation between the two, resonance between the two, because when you start adding one, if you get one frequency, it works well. You get three, you get subharmonics that work with each other. And the idea is to get it all tuned so that you have the most gas output. Uh, we, we verify that through a, an Alicat uh, scientific digital meter where we can measure hundreds of pounds per square inch and hundreds of a liter per uh, second that passes through the output line and through an oscilloscope and a frequency meter that we know exactly what is coming out at a given instant that is set. So while tuning each individual, like a regular motor, except you're changing the time of each cylinder that's coming out. You're tuning a musical instrument here. We're looking for the resonant octave that they're all playing in. You've got a drum head with 10 screws, actually 20 screws because you get your positive and negative on each one, and you're trying to tighten each screw to where you have a perfect pitch on what's happening between the electrolysis and the exit of the gas electrically. Okay, And like I said, we'd run that through the alley cat, uh, giving us digital verification of what we have coming out of the thing. And it can be all mapped out on a laptop so that you can see when you get to a close frequency, you'll see a pressure equal all the way along until you get to something that's close and it'll just spike off the chart. It'll say, okay, here's one. And you just keep writing it down go across all the numbers that you have these interferences with and look at what the common denominator is and start with that harmonic and tune everything down to that. I, I applaud you for the way you applied the scientific method and your collection of data and you're, you're really doing it, doing it the right way. Um, I've got some... Out, out of the gas here, we're coming into the, the uh, distilled vinegar scrubber, into the master blaster steel so that if there is any explosion, it does not get back to the quantity of gas that's here in the manifold. Uh, there's a double input, one out of the scrubber into here, and then atmospheric air being brought into the bubbler here to go back to Henry Payne's uh, study of the mixing of gases. Uh, atmospheric nitrogen and CO2. When the CO2 binds with the hydrogen, you have methane gas. So you're increasing the density of the fuel and the nit atmospheric nitrogen slowing down the flame front. So it, it, everything's being put onto an Excel spreadsheet, trying to break it down to find exactly what's happening at the moment it is happening. And then once it's all done, it can be brought into exotic plastics, not look as bulky. Kim's, this is Kim's tribute to uh, Big Daddy Ed Roth for rat fink, because I mean, this is a big shifter out the top that eventually this will go down to the size of a cooler. But exotic plastics are very expensive. The molds are very expensive. And this will give you the idea of what's going on. Right. Well, we're going to be watching uh, for the results of, the, of this thing. And uh, I just want to say, job very well done, sir. It's great to see you again yeah. here at the show. Yeah. Uh, that's Next it. one again. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll see you in July down at the games, probably. Uh, actually, I won't be at the games in, in July. Okay. Sorry it's about USF, that. but it's good. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Zero Fossil Fuel at uh, AEPC 2009. <laughs> again, I'm with the infamous Bodioti. Everybody take care. Peace. Cheers.